Thank you very much and good morning and uh, welcome to our conference. Um, so I'm going to talk today, there's going to be a number of talks about our cloud technologies and, and things that are using it and Conrad gave some um, sort of introduction to this. So I'm going to sort of dive, dive in and have a look. So the idea is to give an overview of the platform and just describe some of the benefits and the features and the technology. But I'm trying to give a sort of big, a big picture view of the whole thing, not, not too focused on small details or, or aspects of it. So before we came to build our cloud, we had some other pieces that were, that were useful, and I'm just going to look, look through some of these. So we had our, our Wolfram language. So as Conrad was saying, it's a concise, literate, high-level programming language. Also something that we're working on and evolving, and I, I can talk about that. Maybe not in this talk, but uh, I'd be interested to talk about that. Obviously, computation, evident in, in the name of Mathematica, um, since the very beginning, we've wanted to support lots lots of computation, but we also want to move, move in new directions. So, for example, data science. Sometimes they're not necessarily, they're new names rather than new directions. So, again, beginning, we've had uh, computable documents, CDFs, notebook documents, Lots of people like to use them for making presentations, and they're very powerful ways of sharing, sharing your work. Um, we have our sort of knowledge, um, integrated, computable data that integrates with the system, and Wolfram Alpha is, is an aspect of that. And we've also had a number of server technologies that have worked. So there's a thing called uh, Web Mathematica that I know some of you have used. And so this is kind of an antecedent of our cloud. So I just want, you know, people talk about clouds and cloud technologies. Sometimes it's a bit hard to sort of, it's like mathematics, it's a bit hard to pin down really what it is, even though everybody has some familiarity with it. Um, and I tend to think of a cloud as a network of, internet-enabled en devices. So all these things kind of are sort of hooked up, and they're using internet-type technology, probably web servers, probably HTTP. Um, the clouds also relate to other concepts. So enterprise computing, that's, that's a long-established concept focused on individual organizations, maybe a company that might have databases and different roles of users. And the idea is the, the enterprise computing is, you know, it's not just an individual person, it's a whole organization. Another thing somewhat related to is, is grid computing, how to make a, a sort of big supercomputer out of lots of individual network computers. So. Let's, let's keep going. So why, why bother with what are some of the benefits, reasons for going to a cloud solution? And so I've listed some of them here. Um, zero configuration. You know, often end users are working through browsers. Everything gets downloaded immediately. You don't have to install things. You don't have to worry about versioning. It just arrives. Very convenient. Um, another thing that's getting more, more important in a number of ways is this device location independence. And that might be device independence. You know, I'm using a laptop, I'm using a smartphone, a tablet. So mobile's an important part of that. And another form of this independence is something where you're working with different types of computer. You know, my one department uses Windows, another one uses Linux, another one uses Macs, and the cloud makes it convenient to sort of marry these things together. And that's, 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 that's kind of an important thing. Um, so sharing, collaborating between people, it's all network-based, that's, that's, that, that's a nice feature. Um, security, 
So since some of the data and the code might often be held centrally and is delivered down through browsers or, or it's worked with on the server, there's, there's, there's a security um, feature. There's a bunch of sort of more technical things. So, you know, scalability and reliability, you know, you don't, if there's a problem, you just fix it on the server area. You don't need to go and, um, you know, sort of, you know, you, you don't have to download patches to all of your users. So the, these are some of the benefits. Um, and then I might distinguish between a couple of directions. So we might think of a cloud application. So this is like a, an application, like a word processor or a spreadsheet. An end user tool resides in a browser, could be mobile, and it's, it's a desk, like a desktop application that's implemented with the cloud. Again, you know, many of the benefits I was, I was talking about are relevant here. And I think this is becoming an important trend in computer technology. Another alternative, um, you know, trend of cloud is a cloud program. So this is something that's programmer oriented. So it's not really something a user, a human being is interacting with directly. It's something a program is calling another program. And it's, it's, it, it's kind of, you know, building things in the cloud um, has the, these, these things in the cloud is, 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 is kind of has, has, you know, again, useful. Um, one of the big benefits of these cloud programs is sort of connecting them up often is very um, simple deployment using, using HTTP. So let's just think about in the Wolfram world what these things mean. So we would tend to think of a cloud application, this is delivering and viewing CDFs, notebook documents, and a cloud program would mean delivering and executing Wolfram language code. So let's just go straight in and look at um, cloud, what we call cloud CDF. So this is notebooks on the web, um, and so I'll just bring up a Browser, we, we come in. So I'm running, actually I'm running on my laptop here, I'm running a private cloud, and I'll talk about those in a bit more detail. And I can just come on. So now I've switched from Mathematica, I'm now running a browser, and I can come in, you know, make a title work. And you know, this is, this is Mathematica, so I can just make a, do, do sort of Mathematica type work. And this is a all running in the browser. And if I can type better. So there's no, there's no plugin. There's no, I didn't have to install anything. I just pointed my browser at a website and everything started, started to work. And let's fix the, you know, and, and it's just a, you know, a notebook document. I mean, it looks, it looks so similar. Often, I'm, maybe there's some of you here, you know, this, this is a browser. It's not, it's not regular Mathematica. Um, and these cloud CDFs support a lot of the features, you know, support. I mean, our, our mission is to support everything to make them work just as well as the... Um, you know, if I can support manipulate and dynamic and other features and such like. There's a talk um, later, I think it's late, later today, that uh, Jan Poshko is giving, uh, that, uh, where Jan's going to talk in much more detail about the, the implementation and features of, of, of cloud notebooks. It's, 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 it's a big, interesting story. So this, um, this cloud CDF that I've created here is very works, you know, it's, it, it's, it's very similar. I could, um, you know, sort of download this. I could open this in, in Mathematica, um, do, do, you know, sorts of things like that. I can keep it in the cloud. Um, but since it's in the cloud, I, I, I can do other things with this that are quite convenient. So for example, I could come here and I could add, um, you know, collaborators. So I could share the document with people. So it's just, visible to specific people who have to have cloud accounts, 
or I could make it public so that anybody could look at it. Um, so I can do things like that. I could come and make some embeddable content so that people can look at it in all sorts of different ways. Um, you know, I can generate a, here's a little, it's a bit hard to see here, but I can generate the sort of, you know, some bit of HTML that I could paste into a, a web page so that I would then embed this notebook in, in some other, in some other um, document. So that's the idea of cloud, cloud notebooks. And left and right. It's, it's really is a viable um, form of um, notebooks, totally, it's purely a web technology, no, no plugin. So as we saw in the browser here, we've got this little File, file viewer here, and I've got a bunch of notebooks here, but, but I can put other types, of, other types of document into it. And so one thing that I could do is, um, let's kind of get, so I could have files, say for example, um, HTML files. And this, this shows the sort of principle um, of the system. So I've opened, some of you will know what HTML is, some of you won't. It doesn't really matter if you don't know what it is. This, this is the language that drives that browsers render. That's how they show you the stuff in the browser. And I can come in here and I can, you know, sort of edit. I get a little bit of, it, it's not a really powerful HTML editor, but it's somewhat, somewhat useful. But what's nice is I can switch from looking at it like this, I can see a deployed view of the um, HTML. And so here I see what the HTML actually is. And so what we have, and this, this similar concept works in other types of files, is that really our cloud is really quite a viable system for building interesting websites that do different, different sorts of things. It's not just notebooks, it can be web, web content as well. So we're really trying to sort of bring together the web mathematica and the sort of notebook things together in one, in, in one system. It's the sort of cloud, cloud files. Now I want to talk about cloud functions. So this is building with, um, working with sort of, you know, the material. This is more writing, doing programming, but using the, using the you know, you, you, using the web. So, The key underlying feature for this is just going to connect to. So I've set up is this concept of cloud objects. So first of all, I'm connecting. I've connected to the cloud, and I've, I give the you know in default I give the cloud base. So this is the URL that I've set up for the private cloud that I have on my system. So you can do the, all of these things. You can do them in our public cloud, or if you have a private cloud, you can, you can do this sort of thing. What I'm gonna do is do a cloud put. And so this is putting the you know, first 100 digits of pi into a cloud object. And we get back this cloud object thing with this URL here. And then if we click on this URL, then we see it's, it's a bit boring. It's just showing you the, the, you know, the digits of pi. So that's not, not totally interesting. I can, I can upload it to the cloud. I can download it like, like so. And of course, these commands, they'll work. You know, I have to set there's permissions and things. Um, but I can do the, the nice thing about this is that given that I'm, you, you know, this has got the the cloud base, I can, I can execute these commands anywhere, anywhere in the world. I could be running in a cloud notebook, I could be running in a Mathematica, I could be running anywhere, and I can access the, um, these, these cloud objects. And they have this, this thing called the UUID, which is this big sort of name that, you know, with some sort of mathematical analysis is 
designed so that you, know, you can create it locally, but you'll never get collisions of these UUIDs. Here I went to get some information about the, the, the object, and you see some, you know, the UUID, and there's like names and permissions and things like, like that. And there's all sorts of things I can give to, you know, to set, set, set these up. So that's in itself is a bit boring, you know, like why, why, do we, why, why, why do we care about these cloud objects? Well, let's start to do some programming. So now I'm going to do cloud evaluate. So if I do cloud evaluate machine name, so if I do machine name locally, I get my, 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 my laptop. But if I cloud evaluate of dollar machine name, I, I get the private cloud. That's, that's the name of the machine, the, the, the private cloud that, that I'm running. And again, this is a simple way to evaluate things in the cloud. Um, it's, you know, again, it's, it's not necessarily so useful in itself other than a simple sort of test. But now we start to get things that are more useful. So now I'm going to talk about API functions. So here I'm defining a, an API function, and it takes one argument, x, which has to be an integer, and then here's the body of the function, so it's going to add that x to 3, and that's my API function. I can call that directly here, um, but I can also deploy it, so new, new concept, cloud deploy, I can deploy this to the cloud. So I come up here, I, I get a URL. So I'm calling this from a browser. Since I didn't give it the argument, it returns a, an error, a web page error. So I could put in the, the argument and then send the API request. And if you can see up here, I get the answer 203. And if you see the API function, it's actually made a, made a call and it's put the argument. This is how one of the ways that the web sends, you send arguments to, to things, it's, it's, it's put the argument up there. Now, the nice thing about this function is I can call it from any, any other programming language that knows how to make HTTP requests, which is just about any other programming language, modern programming language, maybe old Fortran 77 didn't know how to do didn't know how to do uh, HTTP, but languages now know how to do that. And so I'm now taking the, the, the UUID here. So in fact, I can just show you. So I'm doing the, so there's my, my URL, and I'm doing, doing this from Mathematica. I'm doing URL fetch, and it's making the call, and the result's coming back. Now, in these API functions, there's all sorts of extra commands for setting, set the formatting, or I want to see more than the result. I might want to see messages or errors or timeouts or things like that. So, so I can, there's, there's like a big, big language of these things in, in API function. But this is a pretty useful way to make a, to deliver Mathematica code. I just have to make an API function deploy it, and then I can call this from any other language, setting permissions and such like. Now, here's another way to deploy Mathematica functions, and this is to embed the API function in a form. Now, of course, I could go and write some JavaScript and HTML that call the API function, but we've, we've done that for you, and so we have this thing called a form function. So again, it looks very similar to the API function, and I can call it in the same sort of way. But now, when we deploy this, we get to see that it's a bit different. So the form function actually has a user interface, a form that comes, comes around it. So this is the same old boring function that adds, adds numbers together. So this is a a form function, and I've got a slightly more interesting example, and there's more examples of this that we're coming up with later um, in, in, the, in the conference. 
I think, I think Anthony's got some, oh, we'll, be, we'll look at some more. Um, but here I've got a form function, and I'm calling a, another feature that we added in um, Mathematica 10, which is this idea of notebook templating. I'll, I'll be talking more about this in my talk on data science platform tomorrow, but this is a way to create a notebook document based upon a, a template notebook. So I give the name of the, the template and the parameters that I'm filling out there. So now this form is going to return a cloud CDF, and I'm giving a little bit more stuff here. So I define this function, and then I deploy it. So now this, so I've got the form, it's got more fields, and there's a big language for setting different, different elements in the form. And I'm going to type in something like, and this is now running a command that's created a notebook document. And so this is one that, so I've, I've created a, a CDF, but I created a, you know, the CDF, it didn't exist before, I just created it when I filled in the form, and it, you know, you know I put in sign, or here I'll put in some, and then we can put in some Mathematica, go, put in some sort of mathematical function, and then we get some, you know, more, more, more result. So this form, obviously, the form could be looking up users in your database and making a plot, or you could be doing some financial analysis, or other, other types, you know, looking up students and plotting there, or students could be submitting work, or, or things like that. But it's... Um, it's, it's a nice sort of integration of these different uh, technologies that we have. So that's the, the form function. And so the, the combination of these things in our cloud technology with cloud CDFs, with our form functions, with our API functions, is allowing us, it, this is now a pretty nice, interesting way to build microsites. So these are like websites that do interesting things that we can put together quite easily, and they're, they're pretty scalable to large systems. So Conrad was showing, I'm not going to give a demo of the uh, um, image identify site, but this is how, this is how we at Wolfram Research built, built uh, image identify. So we, so we put it together with a private cloud and various combinations of API functions and form functions and hosting the, the web content in the cloud. And we, it was a pretty streamlined way to create what, what is, you know, really quite a fun, fun site that's actually had very significant amounts of usage. Um, so it was a big, big, you know, we were very pleased with the, A, the, the minimum of effort it took us to put the thing together, and B, the, the type, you know, the, the, the interest that, that it achieved. Right. So now I'm going to move away from some demos and try to talk about some of the technologies we have and how they fit together. So I'm going to look at contrasting, first of all, contrasting our cloud and pre-cloud. So this is, I'm going to look here a little bit about how a traditional, I, I call this non-cloud, but it, it might be sort of pre-cloud desktop Mathematica. This is Mathematica running on your personal computer. So traditional Mathematica, it runs as, a, as an application. You could run this, you know, may, maybe inside your company, but the point here is that you have an individual user and they're doing all these nice things with the system, but it's all local to one machine, that you're, you're just running it on one machine. So like if we want to do sharing of documents, then that's going to have to be done um, very much with, um, you know, I create the document locally. If I want someone else to see it, I can email it to someone. And 
when, when that came along, that was a very sort of powerful concept, but it has some, it has some, you know, some issues. It means the person that I email it to, they need to have Mathematica or, or a player for it. And if they don't have it, they can't do anything with, with the document. Now, instead of emailing it, of course, I could upload it to a server, and then, you know, the other person could, could uh, um, download it. And that's kind of, and that's, that's a nice, popular, powerful way. Um, we have our demonstrations website, which, which is built from, from a concept like that. But there are some issues with this um, that, that you need to think about. So if, if I share a document like this with a coworker, then we've each got two copies of the document. So everybody's working on copies of the documents. And if we make edits or changes, we've got to email them back and forth and integrate them. So it's, it's hard to sort of propagate changes between the things. So that's a, a negative. Let's talk about running code. So here I've got the user. This is all done locally. So the cloud, the, the local user, you know, starts, loads up a document, loads files and things, and then they hit shift enter, and this thing goes through a compute cycle. So it's, it's running locally, sharing code between, you know, I've got it similar to the CDF thing, or, or I've got to copy files, there's no, and, and, and of course I can calculate lots of great things and I can save the results or put the results in a database or email them. That's, that's all very nice. But, but one of the, the key things that's, that's a little bit negative is it's, there's no server operation for this. There has to be a human being sitting there hitting shift enter. And you know if you want the calculation to run at three o'clock in the morning, then the human being has to go there at three o'clock in the morning. Now, Web Mathematica can solve this, and we do have some sort of scripting ways of launching the system, but still it's not supporting a server operation quite, quite so conveniently. And let's look at data loading and saving. Well, Mathematica and the Wolfram language, we have lots of features for importing and exporting and linking tools, and you can connect, you know, in all sorts of ways to, to you know, diff different data. Actually, since you can run this inside a company, there are some benefits of this because, you, you know, you're inside firewalls, so connecting to a database and everything works, works pretty well. Now, let's come and look at a cloud. So our public cloud. So now, this thing here, it's a, it's a cloud user that's maybe, you know, logged in through a, through a, you know, a cloud notebook. It's all running, same types of operations all running in the public cloud, but let's look at how some of these things work. So sharing documents. Well, the sharing of documents is kind of a, a built-in feature of the system. There's, there's like workflows to make it convenient to add set permissions and email the, the, a hyperlink, a, a URL. So, so the user, Initial user makes a document, but the document lives in our cloud, and sharing is via hyperlinks or, or, or URLs. So, so the coworker does not need any, does not need a, you know, a, a plugin. They just need a browser, and the same. They might all be working on a mobile device, so a tablet, and and same thing. They they they, they could work with it, and there's just one version of the document. So updates and things propagate very quickly. Running code, built-in system, but now we've got some more opportunities to run code. So in, in our cloud, we can have the same cloud user can load up their doc, you know, code and do shift enter, but we've got more ways of running. This is the sort of cloud compute cycle that's running here but we can launch the computation in some new ways that were not, not possible before. So we could have, the, we could have an API function that, that I just showed, showed, showed to you. So that could be calling from a, a computer somewhere else, making a call through the API function, running the computation. Could even be an embedded device, like, like a Raspberry Pi or some sort of small, you know, 
tiny little device with just, you know, just needs to be able to connect to the web, that can launch a computation. And then another way that, that we've added, I'll talk more about this tomorrow, is we can have computations running in the cloud that run on a schedule. So every night at 3 o'clock in the morning, you don't have to get out of bed to do shift enter. It, it, you know, the server does it for you. So if you want to run a report so that it, you, you see the result in the morning, that's, 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 that's how it works. So data loading and saving is pretty similar. Now, one of the things here in a way, we're running in the public cloud, so there might be access to private data issues. So that's, that's the thing there. Now, let's come and talk about private clouds. So this is a private cloud is another, it, it's a Mathematica, it, it's a Wolfram cloud, but it lives in a virtual machine and you can run it wherever you want. I'm actually running one, one here. So this is my, I'm, I'm running, it's a virtualized machine, I'm running this in virtual box on my laptop. You know, I could sort of log in. It's just another computer that, 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 that sits here. And you can run this wherever you want. It has very similar features, and you can use it in very similar ways to the public cloud, but it's one for you to run yourself. And that makes it very much an enterprise product, and you might well run it in your intranet. It's private to you, so you, that makes it easier to, control access to your data, and also you control use, usage. You're not competing with other, other users in the cloud, you're, you're controlling the, the usage. So I put, you know, this is, it's, it's all running in your intranet. So sharing documents is, you know, some of these features are gonna work in a similar way to the way it worked before, except it's all secure, it's all private to you and your co-workers, so that might be good for running private ideas, you know, sharing private ideas. Running code, similar. It's in the internet, secure for private ideas and data, and loading data. Now, this is also quite convenient, because there's the private cloud, but I can read and write from a local database in, the, um, in, 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 in my intranet. So that's the benefit of the private cloud. So another thing, and this is something I think we're starting to see um, an interesting way that's, that's also quite unique to our cloud technology is this way of connecting desktop and cloud. And that there are benefits to both of them. Sometimes having a local access is, is convenient, sometimes having cloud access. And so we've set things up so that things work quite conveniently and in different phases of your work. And sometimes when you're working, you might have a prototype phase. So in the prototype phase, you might work entirely locally. You know, you load the data, you're working on your local computer in Mathematica, and you can run calculations and test things out, and you can do all the same things running, running in the cloud. And then when you go to a setup phase, what you do here is you're gonna take your, your functions that you've written, you can upload CDFs, you can upload package files, you could make API functions and upload those to the cloud. So this cloud desktop duality, hybridization, two things working together is, 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 is a powerful concept. <clears throat> so I'm running on my Macintosh laptop here, and I'm using a Chrome browser. Other browsers work just fine, and that's, that's all very nice, but it's also useful to have the clouds working with mobile, and these server things actually lend themselves to that quite, quite nicely, and we have several mobile projects going on at Wolfram Research, the most advanced ones work, work working for iOS, and one of the ones that's quite the most advanced of those, is an app for working with the cloud. So this uses web rendering for the notebooks, and I've just got some sort of simple screenshots here um, that, that I've taken. I don't have a demo of this, but these are, that's the, the cloud, and here's like, kind of like a cloud, you know, notebook running in our 
um, iPad version. It, it actually looks very similar. You know, it actually looks very similar. But this this is a screenshot where it says iPad down there, um, and diff different screenshots of the uh, of this cloud document. It's pretty nice to be able to share documents and have them show up on the. You know, some of these work a bit better on the uh, size of the uh, screen that you get. So with our core technologies, we've, we've built a number of products that from the core technology, the core, and we've built a number of platforms. And so we talk about these with, with Mathematica. Um, we, we talk about these and we talk about our cloud. So, so a key one is Mathematica Online. And this is very much traditional Mathematica, Mathematica notebooks that works through a browser in the cloud. So probably, for a number of you, the one that would be most familiar. We also have a programming cloud. And so this is using, trying to focus and enhance the programming features. And then we have our data science platform. I won't go into this in detail. But that's taking the, again, trying to build a platform that, that tries to collect workflows that are convenient for data science. And I'll, I'll be showing that tomorrow. For the usage, the public cloud, it's a subscription-based system. And there's different uh, you know, interactive cloud notebooks. You, you get a subscription level. And then you can deploy CD, cloud CDFs or API functions. And there's, we have this concept of cloud credits that you, you buy cloud credits. And you get some sort of dashboard that comes up, and you can see how many credits, how many credits you have, and what how 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 how, how that's going. Um, private cloud, you 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 license the private cloud, and then you can use it as you want. So that's 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 a simplification of the private cloud. Um, security, we've we've got uh, we have this Wolfram ID thing, documents and things. Uh, private to each Wolfram ID, the Mathematica engine, the kernel, runs in a sandbox mode, which, which restricts file access and such like. Um, in the private cloud, of course, you can customize these. And if you want your private cloud to run C executables and things like that, you can, you, you, you can customize it. There's also a permission system for notebook documents and Cloud, cloud objects in general, and you can set different levels of permission, read, write, execute, and public. There's, there's a nice permission system. Um, I'll just run down here. How does, how does our cloud relate to some of our existing products? So desktop Mathematica, I gave some idea. It, it, with our cloud hybridization, it, it, it fits in very well with, with this. Um, with Workbench, we've um, been adding integration features to integrate the cloud with, with Workbench, so you can push your project up to the cloud or, or integrate it in, in that sort of way. Sometime we'll probably in investigate a cloud-based IDE. Um, <coughs> Web Mathematica, Web Mathematica is actually the engine behind the cloud, so the development will continue, um, <coughs> we'll probably, I mean, Web Mathematica will definitely continue. We're probably looking now to host Web Mathematica material inside the cloud. And um, Grid Mathematica, we're also developing integration of the cloud with Grid Mathematica. So I'll just summarize, and then we can go and have coffee. Um, I was trying to give you a big picture overview of our cloud platform. This, this really now is, is a viable system. Um, we're, we're really starting to use it at Wolfram Research. And I encourage any of you to try, get a cloud account and try, try things out, try, try, try to build things. And I know that there's, there's a bunch of people here who are interested in coming to talk about all sorts of different aspects of that. I gave you some of the benefits of the cloud platform and compared desktop, public, and private clouds looked at the workflows that these enhanced and supported and why some of them were useful. And then I looked at subscription levels, security, and some of the related 
products. Anyway, I'd encourage you all to try, try our cloud, and I think it's an interesting way to move forwards. So thank you very much.